My name is Paul Shelley, and welcome to The Astro Historian. This is a channel dedicated to exploring and explaining the lore of sci-fi and space universes and discussing their impact. Today we'll be talking about the frontline anchor of the UEE Navy in the world of Star Citizen, the sword of humanity itself, the Aegis Dynamics Javelin. But before we get started, I'd like to thank y'all for your continued support. We have over 17,000 subscribers and rising, so if this is the second time you've watched one of my videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when these are released. With that being said, let's learn about the most versatile capital ship in the UEE fleet. The story of the Javelin is the story of humanity's contact with the Van Duel. Shortly after the first contact with the species in 2685, Ileana Mezer, aka Mezer VI, used this incursion by the belligerent species to promote a wartime footing. Up until this point, the UEE Navy had been heavily reliant on cruisers and battleships as the main bulk of their forces. While they had impressive defenses and firepower, they were slow and cumbersome, hard to rapidly deploy into a war zone, especially against an enemy which favored raids over traditional military conflicts like the Van Duel. So Ileana proposed a multi-purpose destroyer, which packed a significant punch but could rapidly deploy to a threat while also easily pivoting to other roles to fill gaps in the fleet. To no one's surprise, Aegis Dynamics was given a no-bid contract to build this new destroyer. It was seen as the first modern destroyer and required a massive overhaul of everything from shipyards to component construction. An ambitious timeline was set of 18-month design phase built at the new modernized age of shipyards on Io, starting in 2686. The process was far more than just building a new destroyer to counter the Vanduul threat, but one designed to overhaul the aging facilities and develop new techniques for newer ships to be built after the Javelin. Incredibly, the process almost managed to work, with the first 11 Flight 1 Javelins being spaceworthy in that 18-month time with only minor design aspects still undecided by their launch. In fact, the only major controversy of the ship's construction centered around the paint for these first 11. The Imperators wanted a flashy paint scheme for these first ships to show off to the public, while the Navy was experimenting with role-specific camo schemes they wanted to introduce with the new ship. In the end, the ships were split, four being painted pearlescent white and gold highlights for the Imperator, two olive drab bombardment destroyers, three stealth black raiders, and a pair of grey fleet support ships. While in the end the camo schemes were found to be not as effective as the navy hoped, the Imperator paint job came to symbolize the Mezer era, for better or worse. What really made the Javelin stand out compared to other capital ships of its time was just how flexible it really was. UEE Javelins are named after human weapons, with the first prototype being the UEES Javelin. All Flight 1 Javelins were modular and could be refitted at dry dock fairly quickly to change its role. In the past, each role would require its own custom-built ship, but with the modular ability of the Javelin, it could now perform six different distinct roles. With FanDuel raids coming more frequent, the fleet and commerce escort configuration was designed to operate individually or as part of a small escort fleet being far more independent of the fleet support ships, but still being able to operate in small squadrons when needed. As the goal was to eventually counterattack the Van Duel, the Convoy Raider configuration was designed to operate in long-range strikes deep behind enemy lines, effectively making this configuration a privateer variant. The Recon and Force configuration was fitted with extra armor and weapons to punch its way through enemy lines while also being stripped of a lot of its valuable assets out of the ship to make its possible loss less risky. The command and control configuration was equipped with a full suite of sensors, communications, and monitoring stations to allow it to act as the nucleus of a small battle group, or back up fast flagships as needed. Additionally, because of this configuration's sensors and the ship's speed, it could act as a search and rescue platform for after-action situations. The planetary bombardment configuration was designed more as a support version to help larger cruisers. However, the configuration did have much better targeting software, which allowed for more surgical strikes from its weapons on space and ground-based installations, while also lending its impressive firepower to any fleet-based planetary bombardment. The last configuration of the Flight 1s was an armored transport, which was also the rarest of the configurations, as its primary role was VIP transport. It should be noted that Imperator Ileana Mezer only ever traveled aboard Javelins, but she was the exception to the rule. The first five Javelins to make it into military service created the UEEN's 8th Destroyer Squadron in 2690. While the Javelin was the first UEE destroyer and was the first ever destroyer squadron, 
The designation was chosen to confuse enemy intelligence, as this period in UEE history was particularly paranoid about alien influence in the Empire. The squadron saw its first operation that year, during a search and rescue for a civilian freighter thought to have been captured by the Vanduul. Though it turned out to have simply suffered a system failure and drifted off course, the squadron was still awarded its first action star. The first combat the Javelin saw was two years later, in 2692, when a Javelin raider with a few escorts located and engaged a Vanduul fleet tender and its escorts of corvettes. The result was astonishing. The Javelin dominated the battle, with all the Vanduul ships destroyed or forced to flee, while not a single casualty was sighted by the UEEN. The entire operation lasted only 15 minutes. From 2690 to today, Javelin production has never ceased. In fact, the same basic structure of the ship has remained the same for over 200 years. However, the internal design tweaks and upgrades done bit by bit since the first Javelin ones were launched has not stopped, meaning a Javelin produced in 2740 would be entirely different from one produced today, despite the exterior looking more or less the same. The first major design update of the ship was in 2790, marking a century of service of the Flight 1s. The Flight 2s were crafted by a fleet-led design team which bypassed Aegis itself and focused on improving the modularity and overall interior space of the ship. Before Flight 2s, major configuration changes would require several days in a shipyard. The Flight 2s could refit in the field. The Flight 2s were quickly replaced by the Flight 3s in 2820, as the rise of carrier-based bombers capable of taking down capital ships was putting the Javelin in danger. So, the Flight 3s were designed with a reworked shield system, point defense turrets, and improved sensors. This would add another role to the Javelin, that of bomber screen for fleets alongside the new Aegis Hammerhead. Since this update, not a single Vanduul bomber has taken out a Javelin alone, proving the effectiveness of this design. The most well-known Flight 3 Javelin is one we have actually seen in-game, both the inside of and while in action, the UES Warhammer. Built in 2832, the ship was assigned to the 2nd Fleet, 6th Battle Group, close to the Vanduul Front. One of its early encounters with the Vanduul was on June 25, 2861, when Vanduul raiders ambushed the Warhammer and managed to slip boarding spikes by the point defense systems to board the ship. Five off-duty crew members were killed almost instantly, but the crew would eventually fight them off and claim victory. In one of the most famous actions of its history, the Warhammer was present at the fall of Caliban, when on July 7, 2084, it was one of the only capital ships in the system and was covering the withdrawal of civilians and naval forces. Putting itself between the approaching Vanduul and the fleeing ships, it reportedly never stopped firing its guns for the entire day. Gunners reported their sweat sizzling as it fell off of them from the intense heat buildup of the sustained fire. After the battle, the heat was found to have been so intense that it physically warped the hull. These observations led to improvements of future Flight 3s. Proving the Javelin's flexibility, the Warhammer would then bounce between numerous roles and fleets, including aiding in the reclamation of the Nexus system from its pirate overlords. The ship is probably most well-known to the residents of the Stanton system as being the main UEE Navy presence in the system. Stationed out of Jericho Station, the Warhammer, under Captain Metcalf, was present during the Xenothreat incursion into Stanton of 2951, scoring over 70 kills, including several capital ships with the aid of local CDF forces. It has also participated in local Invictus celebrations, giving public tours of the ship at various ports in the Stanton system. In 2810 and 2915, the Flight 1s and 2s were fully retired, but the sheer volume of javelins built meant that there was far too many to keep and maintain in mothballs. So, with the passage of the Militia Mobilization Act, the UEE began to sell these destroyers to the public at an extremely limited basis. This was an extremely controversial move, as many worried about giving capital warships to civilians, while others countered with concerns over military cost and the threat of the Vanduul looming while these perfectly good warships sat idle. The Navy famously was against the move, and as a political statement, updated their war books with the Javelin silhouette as a possible threat, the same day as civilian sales began. The Javelin is one of, if not the, most effective warships against the Vanduul that humanity has ever built. It has constantly proved, time and again, that its unique combination of firepower, armor, and speed to be the most potent combination in modern naval warfare. 
Its flexibility made it likely one of the most popular and common ships in the Navy, from anchoring patrols and escorts to supporting massive naval fleets. While the Flight 3s will soon be headed to the Boneyards, with no Flight 4s yet designed, it is clear that the Javelin will remain a force to be reckoned with for generations to come. Thanks for watching. I'd like to thank those patrons on screen now, whom, without their help, none of this would be possible. If you want to join them, the link is in the description below. For as little as $5 a month, you can get early access to videos, including a timed exclusive covering the entire history of the Star Citizen universe, whose first two episodes have been released to the public. Check them both out now to see what $5 a month will get you. For now, let me know what you think about the Sword of Humanity in the comments below. And as always, remember, Existoria at Astra.